Hey dolls, welcome back to my channel. Today is another series episode of Freaky Friday. I have my shirt ready. If you got it, haunt it. I got this one at Target. And I do have the slightly darker background. I am actually in my living room right now on my couch. And drinking today, no modelo, but I have my Smirnoff drink just because I drank yesterday and my stomach feels kind of heavy. And then <laughs> I also have my Cheetos puffs. So get comfortable with me. Thank you all for your submissions and we're just going to get started. So like I said, get comfortable, relax, or start getting ready if you're about to go out. All right, dolls, so before we get into this first story, cheers. So this first story is from Carla. Hi, my name is Carla from Texas. I decided to email you the story my dad told me a while back. By the way, I love your videos and you. I love you more. But anyways, let's get into the story. So my dad and his wife had barely moved into a house. It was a nice house and they liked it, but his wife felt very uneasy at times. She would hear noises here and there. She would always try to find an explanation, but sometimes she just couldn't. But one night, my dad was with her and they witnessed something so strange and creepy. They were in the living room watching TV just hanging out when they heard a knock on the door. My dad went to go check and no one was there. They thought it was maybe just some kids doing a prank. And then an hour passed and the same thing happened. His wife got up this time to go check it out and again, there was no one. So my dad and his wife were very creeped out and again, this knocking started up again. My dad and his wife went and they made sure to go as fast as they could to see who was knocking. Once they got to the door, it was a child, a boy. He was about seven or eight, they said. It seemed strange because it was around eight or nine at night and they were concerned for him. The little boy asked if he could come inside and call his parents. But my dad and his wife felt very, very uneasy about this child. And my dad said, okay, let me get my phone. Once they came back to the door, they said the boy was gone. They were gone for about four seconds. They kept the door open. They didn't want to let the child in because they felt uneasy about the child. There's, there are plenty of stories like that where it's like a trap and there's people waiting outside, so I don't blame them. They were thinking it's impossible for him to leave without us seeing him leave. They thought it was something paranormal. They prayed for the child and asked God to protect him. Well, a couple of days after my dad talked to the homeowner and told him about what happened. And the homeowner said that there was a little boy that was abused by his parents and died there. Oh my gosh, oh, starting off sad. My dad told his wife and they cried because they truly believed it was that little boy. They always remembered that little boy and after they prayed, all the noises stopped and didn't feel uneasy. After knowing what happened in the house, they decided to move because it was sad about what happened. Oh, I don't blame them. That's awful. I think this story was so creepy but sad, but they have faith the boy was about to move on to heaven. I hope you and your subscribers like this story. Oh, that's such a sad story, especially to hear of the abuse and the fact that he died. I'm assuming he died from it from the sound of it. Thank you, Carla, so much for that story. See, and the thing is that you never know if it's going to be a scary, creepy story or just creepy in the sense of paranormal activity, but very sad all around. Just like when we had our other subscriber whose dad died, that one was sad as well. It was creepy, and then at the same time, it was really sad. Okay, dolls, so moving on to the next story. This one is from Colette. Hello beautiful, I absolutely love this series you are doing. It is amazing. Thank you my love. So first things first, my name is Colette Hannah on YouTube and I have been experiencing the supernatural demonic ghosts or what have you since I was three years old. I was raised Baptist Christian so the supernatural was talked about often and we were always told Jesus defeated Satan when he died on the cross for our sins. I'm still unsure of why I have seen and experienced all things I have. So enough backstory. Let's get to the nightmare turned real. This was back in 2006. I was a fresh faced 18 year old that was about to start my first real ever retail job for a grocery store in the next town over. We lived with my uncle and were helping take care of his three children whose mother walked out on them. I was so excited and I had dedicated my new position to God. I had prayed for Jesus to use me at this job 
to be a light for him and to help lead others to Christ by just being myself and being a good example in front of others. So fast forward the night before I was to start my first day, which was a morning shift at 6 a.m. and I needed to get to bed early. As I was getting ready for bed, showering, doing my hair, laying out my new uniform and everything, I just felt anxious and pressure. The kind of pressure I had always felt before something bad was going to happen, but I just tried to ignore it and move on. We had a dog at the time who had recently given birth to a bunch of puppies and I went and spent time with them every day and I always went and checked on them before bed, so it was time for me to go to bed. I shared my room with my mother at the time and she always stayed up late so she could watch TV in the living room. My cousins were already tucked away in their beds and I said goodnight to my mom and said my prayers and went to sleep. I fell asleep pretty fast and oh boy was I about to have a horrible night. So in this dream, which I can still see clear as day, I was standing at the sink in our kitchen talking to someone or something to the left of me. As I'm washing dishes, I'm looking out our tiny window and I see the puppies running around and playing. I then hear this whining and crying and see them running in fear. I see there is a huge black dog with red eyes running after my pups and tearing them to shreds and ripping them apart. So I drop my dishes in the sink and I run out of the kitchen door that leads right outside of the yard where I'm watching my babies being torn apart and eaten. Oh my gosh, even if it's a dream, that's awful. I'm screaming and yelling at this huge demon dog to stop. I grab as many of my puppies in my arms as I can see, three, and I remember this sickening, loud, crumbling, and growling sound as pressure fills my ears. As I turn to see on the side of the house, this gnarled, gangly, dark, black, tar-looking demon digging his long, clawed fingers into the gutter and the wall of the house. It looked like it was very angry and filled with rage. It was drooling and red smoke was billowing out of its mouth and nostrils as its red eyes were boring into my soul. I'm holding my puppies and I'm paralyzed at the sight I'm seeing. This evil demonic creature was so horrifying to look at. I remember thinking if I could just run away. I just wanted to get away from that thing. I felt completely cut off. I started hearing it growl, no, 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 no. It was gripping the gutter on the roof so tightly it was crushing it into pieces. Woke up after that with just my eyes opening and I saw the same slim and black as tar demon with red eyes right above my head floating and hanging on the wall and pointing its bony clawed fingers into my eyes still growling, no. <gasps> I smelled sulfur and I saw the red smoke and eyes angrily glaring at me. I felt paralyzed and I, rem and I remember telling myself I was going to scream. I was saying to myself in my head, I will not lay here in silence and be attacked by this demon. I will open my mouth and I will scream Jesus. I will scream and I will fight. I remember having a terrified and angry conversation with myself in my mind and then just being able to scream at the top of my lungs, Jesus. The demon disappeared and I remember my bedroom door flying open as my mom came running in it and asking me what was going on. I was able to move so I sat up crying hysterically. I told my mom what had happened and I had to go check on the puppies. So we went out together through the kitchen side door the whole time I'm praying out loud for protection and that my puppies are safe and they were all okay. Also, my mom asked me why I had closed our bedroom door. I recall looking at her and just feeling all my hair stand on end. I never closed my bedroom door. I have always slept with my door open since I was very little. I remember my mom said my face went pale when she asked because the realization sank in. That putrid demon was so strong it had closed my door to make sure I was cut off and alone for it to be able to torture me without interruption. I'm still not sure why I am a target even though I have some theories. Oh, and so a week after this incident all of my sweet pups mysteriously died. No, oh my gosh. I remember it was a really dark, gloomy day with rain, thunder, and lightning. I had returned home thinking that they must be around the back of the house, and I saw one of them sleep, sleeping in the grass, so I just didn't think anything of it. Later, I was looking out the kitchen window, and I noticed the same puppy was still laying in the grass, and it was starting to rain a little heavier now. I went out to go check the puppy that was laying in the grass, and as I looked around the backyard, I saw that several of the other puppies were just laying in the grass too. I got to the first puppy, and when I touched him, I knew he was dead. I went to the other pup puppies laying down, and they all had passed away too. 
I was crying at this point and I ran inside and called my mom to come qu home quickly because the puppies were dead. I didn't put two and two together until a couple weeks later that maybe that demon was responsible. Only two of our dogs lived, the mommy and her first puppy. It still makes me sad because for years I thought it was my fault. I'm pretty confident now and when I come under attack I know how to fight. I'll share more experiences in the future, but for now, I'll end this with you. I will also be sharing this one on my personal YouTube channel. I'm including my pictures I drew. I'm not that artistic, so you can see what I remember. I hope no one is affected by my story. Remember, God is more powerful than the demonic. I hope you have a blessed day, and I did say some prayers for you, Ashley because the demonic do not like being discussed. Thank you so much, Colette, for sharing this story, and I'm actually going to include the photos here. And I'm so sorry to hear about your puppies. Okay, dolls, so this next one has two stories in one, and they're fairly short, so. And this is from Christina Dreams. Okay, I just wanna start off saying that you are amazing, and I love you so much, and that you are an inspiration to me. Well, thank you, my love! <laughs> I really appreciate that, you guys, seriously. I know I say it all the time, but I really, really do genuinely appreciate it, and I love you guys so much. My name is Christina. So for the first story, I was about five or six. I was home with my mother and we decided to watch a movie together. I chose to watch Jeepers Creepers. I've always been a sucker for scary movies. As my mom was about to put the movie on, I went to our little kitchen to make something to eat. I had even made popcorn for me and my mom. But I heard someone call my name. But it wasn't my mom's voice. It didn't sound like anyone I've heard before. In the kitchen, we had a little window to peek out into the living room. I turned around and in that window I saw an old woman. She resembled my abuelita who had passed away Christmas Eve, but it wasn't my abuelita. This thing had a very pale looking face and black holes where the eyes were supposed to be. Ooh, it's getting the chills. I screamed and jumped on my mother's lap. I pointed to the kitchen and it was gone. My mom told me in Spanish that no one was there. From that point on, it still scares me. I now live across from that house and I swear I still get the creeps. The house is empty and no one lives there. Anyone that has moved out, not even within a year. Oh, so they're definitely experiencing stuff. <gasps> You should probably try to research the history on the house. Maybe someone died there or someone evil died there. Maybe a witch or something because that is creepy. Second story. I was talking to my boyfriend while this happened. I'm just getting out of the shower and as I'm getting dressed, I hear the girls' door open. I hear them walk past the bathroom, then back into their room. In my head, I'm saying to myself that there is no way that these girls are up already from taking a nap. So I walk out of the bathroom and peek in their room. The door is open instead of cracked, how I usually leave it. The girls are still passed out. So I look around the house and all the doors are locked. I saw footsteps past the doorway. I'm sitting on the couch confused as hell trying to think how because I showered to calm myself down. I know what I saw and I heard. I still can't explain it. Okay, so this next one is two short stories as well. And this is from Cassie. Hi, Ashley. First, I wanted to say I seriously enjoy your tutorials. You're like the nice and cool girl next door that everyone wants to be friend. Thank you so much, my love. That is so sweet. I love you. I love this idea. Freaky Fridays. Yay. My, st my story of paranormal is something that still occurs. When I was a child, I'd have thoughts of premonitions while awake and eight to 10 times they'd come true. However, my most scariest moments ever are in public places. I felt energy from looking at pictures and seeing a person's bad energy or a house, having flashes of its horrors. It's a gift and a curse at the same time. I have seen so many things from long-limbed species on roofs, ooh, to American Indians sitting around a fire, never acknowledging me gratefully. For whatever reason, I am not afraid of animals, both domestic and wild. I feel as though I can read their senses and vice versa. My scariest encounter is at night and or mirrors. My dad owned a house in Dalton, Illinois when I was around the same age and in the basement there was a huge cutoff room with one of those long egated mirrors. Oh, talking about mirrors again. The previous owner's father died in the house and when my sister and my niece were messing around with the camera taking pictures, when we got the pictures developed, we seen a shadow in the mirror next to us that appeared to be holding a knife 
towards us. That was the last time I went into that bedroom. I really enjoy your videos. Thank you so much. Oh, heck no. I want to see that photo. If you, if you still have that photo, I want to see it. But if you burned it, I totally understand. That is scary. And like my friend was saying last time, mir mirrors, I guess they say, is like a, a whole nother sort of way for things to come into this world. I don't know. But that is scary. Scary. I would have gotten, did you guys get rid of that mirror? Because I totally would have gotten rid of it. The scariest story I have ever been a part of is below. If you're going to read any one of my stories, please read this one. And yes, it is true. My first email, I do explain that I have paranormal sightings as well as unexplained experiences. Sometimes I am left to be extremely petrified and sometimes I'm not scared at all. One thing that scares me though is someone who is being possessed. Oh, that scares me too. Years ago, I worked for Medicaid and Med Medicare and there was this new girl straight out of high school and for whatever reason, I just felt extremely uncomfortable around her, yet it was my job to train her. I knew that it was nothing that she did that made me feel uncomfortable, but yet it was her energy. Something about her did not sit well with my gut. On weekends, I was after hours, so inside of our department, it was just me and her, and so you can imagine, I felt so petrified, I just wanted to leave. In fact, I almost quit our second shift together, and I was there for quite a while. Ooh, that's crazy. One day we were talking, and I asked her a question, and it was nothing personal or nothing really serious. I can't remember what I asked her, but when she looked at me, her eyes shifted as if they changed shape as well as color. Oh my gosh, I'm getting the chills. Oh, hell no. I'm just, when you guys saw your stories I put the picture together and I imagine these things so sometimes I just get really creeped out I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me so I tried to brush it off even though the feeling that I had in the pit of my stomach was almost like dread the next day which was on a Sunday it was very slow and the phone barely rang as I was dispatcher for after hours she began to explain to me that she is from Honduras she was actually possessed by several demons which made sense all of a sudden as to why before she told me that I was seeing sheep I was envisioning me throwing myself out the window Things that I normally wouldn't think or see in my mind, even when I was not at work, it was absolutely petrifying to me. That's scary. Many cultures use sheep as symbolism of death or symbolism of a demon. I would have premonitions even while dri driving of her coming up to me with this pencil and stabbing me in the neck. What the fuck? It was later confirmed by her that she was possessed even till this day. I had asked her if she believed in the Bible and she gave me the scariest look. Her voice changed in a very, oh my God, in a very weird, really tone, like a deep, deep, deep tone. It was very scary. I did not know what was going to happen. What I do know is that she did not like the fact that I brought up the Bible. She stated that whenever she would read the Bible, it would mock her. Basically, it would make fun of her. I asked her if she would touch it and she said, no. She told me to get away from her and I felt very suicidal that day for no reason at all. In fact, that day I quit. This was the worst experience energy I've ever felt in my life. What the? That is scary. The fact that a demon can make someone else do something like that just for asking about the Bible. That is so scary. How does that girl even live her life? Have you heard anything about her? Have you gotten any updates? Because I really want to know what the heck is going on with her? Is she still alive? Has she done anything crazy? That is scary. Thank you so much, Cassie, for sharing those stories. Okay, dolls, moving on to the next story. The next one is from Gabriela, and it is titled Hauntings in the IE. Hi, Ashley. My name is Gabriela, and I've been subscribed to your channel for years now. Thank you, my love. And I'm loving the Freaky Friday series. I bring you two scary stories originating in the Inland Empire. Story number one. This story originates at my Theo's house in Ontario, California. My uncle's house is situated right behind the 10th freeway in a cul-de-sac next to a giant water reservoir that is bone dry and sketchy. One night after a family party, I was in the restroom washing my hands after handling my business. <laughs> as I soaked my hands up, I could feel a tap on my right shoulder and quickly dismissed it as nothing. As I began to dry my hands, I felt the tap again, only harder. I bet you some of you are feeling taps right now on your shoulder. <laughs> I thought one of my little cousins was hiding in the restroom playing tricks on me, so I checked the cabinets and pulled back the shower curtain only to discover it empty. Oh, hell no, girl, I would have gotten out because even if someone was playing a trick on me, I have always had this terror that 
if I pull back the shower curtain, the devil's gonna be back there. I have always had that terror. At that point, I was weirded out and confused, but quickly forgot about it as I went outside to chat with family. A few hours later, my cousin Jenny runs out the restroom towards me, stating how someone had tapped her shoulder as she was washing her hands. Hadn't told anyone and could feel the hairs stand on the back of my neck and arms. Ooh. Story number two. Coincidentally, my cousin Jenny is no stranger to the supernatural. She used to live in a haunted house in Colton for nearly 10 years. Of all her experiences, this by far was the worst. One night while Jenny was sleeping with her sister, she had a nightmare that a tiny, hairy creature in the shape of a ball was crawling, almost suffocating her in her sleep. She said she couldn't move or breathe and was trying to frantically wake up. When she managed to wake up, she screamed and realized this creature or demon was actually on her face. She pushed the creature off of her in sheer terror to only find it crawl up the wall and out the window. Oh, she remembers praying to God, but this unfortunately would not be the last incident. Hope you guys enjoyed these stories. I have more if you'd like to hear about the haunted house in Colton. Heck yes, send them over. Thank you for sharing your stories. First, that one house, your your deal's house, did, did he ever say that he's experienced anything or has anybody else aside from you and your cousin ever experienced anything? But thank you, babe, for sharing your stories. Oh, you guys, I'm so excited. We got our first alien story and it's in uh, parentheses, maybe. So hoping this is a good one. This next one is from Ashley Page and IG, I'm excited about this one. Hey Ashley, I've been a follower for years and I'm digging the content, yay! I got a bit of a different story for you today. One Ashley to another, hey! <laughs> I would like to note that this story still shakes me up to this day and I still don't have answers. Maybe you and your audience will have other theories. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. You guys, you theor theorists, please, please get ready. I want a whole conversation going on in the comments. But I am convinced it has something to do with aliens. Well, here's my story. A couple years ago, I was in a long-term relationship with this guy. We'll call him Tony. Well, Tony's parents had this cabin a couple of hours away they'd stay at on the weekend sometimes. Tony and I would go when they wouldn't and stay the weekend and check on their property. This cabin is in the middle of nowhere. Nearest neighbor was maybe a mile away. We were surrounded by forest and upon the size of a lake and an outdoor pool bar area. Oh, that sounds nice. The first night we got pretty drunk and swam most of the day. The next morning we were a bit hungover and decided we would stay sober. We cleaned the pool for his parents and just watched movies when it got dark out. I made some meatball subs. We had those trays you place in front of you to eat when you sat down on the living room sofa. We put on Galaxy, you know, with Sandra Bullock. We're eating, watching, it's about 11 p.m. at this time. I'm about halfway through my sandwich and then poof. It's like I blinked and everything was different. I felt dazed and horrified, almost absent-minded. I see light popping through the curtains and the DVD menu screensaver is going when the symbol bounces corner to corner. My mind is foggy and trying to grasp what just happened. Did I black out? Then I hear Tony beside me, get up, we gotta go now. He grabs my hand and I can't even respond verbally. He leads me outside to his car. It is morning, the sun is up. I'm in the passenger seat and Tony starts the engine. I realize his eyes are wide and horrified. We gotta go, we gotta go, he kept repeating. Oh my God, this is so scary. <laughs> and he drives like a maniac down the road. There's no other cars, he's going well over 80. I glance at the time on his car radio, 640. My brain is trying to put it together and I try to open my mouth to talk to him and ask what's wrong with us. I can't. He's crying now and starts coming too. What the hell am I doing? What happened? Are you okay? He starts heading back to the cabin and I slowly can talk again. Did we black out? What's going on? We start pulling up and we see something where we normally park. So we park next to it. We get out and he tells me it looks like a timing belt. I don't know anything about cars. He opens his hood. It's his timing belt. How the hell was he driving normally? We are finally acting and feeling normal and trying to discuss what happened as we walk inside. 
Our subs are cold, half eaten on the trays. All the lights are on in the house, even in areas and rooms we never touch that weekend. All our clothes from our suitcase are thrown everywhere through the house. We go to the pool and see if anything is different. The extension cord to the bar is usually covered and it's pulled from the ground and disconnected. We have no idea. We lost hours of time. The last thing I remember was the last thing he remembers. It was a crazy and uneasy feeling. We even examined ourselves to look for marks or anything. Were we abducted? Did someone mess with our time somehow? Well, we had to call his dad because of his timing belt issue and he tells his parents. They say we were drunk. Me and Tony know we weren't. We just accepted we will never know the answer and no one will believe us. Something weird happened to Tony after that. It's like his sanity slowly slipped from him and a few years later, I had to leave him because of it. No, we've known each other for over eight years before this and together for almost three at the time. He became violent so I couldn't stay. I wonder if something happened to him to change him and what it was. Haven't talked to him in years, but everyone we know mutually says he's absolutely a head case now. He believes he's God or something, holy, and has a mission on earth and a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense. It could be mental health issues or something changed him that day. I wish I had the answers. Thanks for making it through my long story. Any opinions? Do you think it was aliens? I've had a few paranormal experiences, but this is the one no one ever believes. Girl, it was aliens. <laughs> I totally think it was aliens because of the fact that you guys, okay, let's say, Let's say you guys were drunk, okay? Let's go with everybody else's um, theory that you were drunk. How is it that you both lost track at the same exact time? And how is it that everything in the house is all crazy? So you both happened to black out at the same time, rummaged through the house, made it a mess, and then everything with the electronics going crazy? No, I definitely think it was aliens. I am terrified, terrified, and I never, ever, ever want to be abducted by aliens. So I pray that I am never abducted by aliens because I definitely do believe they exist. I pray that you weren't abducted. Maybe it was just him and they freaking just gave you a little blackout uh, session, but that's it. Thank you, my love, for sharing your story. Oh, that was a good one. Um, you guys, my audience, please, what is your theory? What do you think? happened was she abducted or what do you think happened so that is it for the spooky stories today thank you all who have submitted and like i always say your stories will be included in videos i'm just going in the order that they are received so don't be discouraged if you have not heard your story yet thank you dolls for taking your time to submit them if you do want to submit a story please submit it to freaky fridays 2019 at gmail.com and let's just lighten the mood up now as always with the outfit i have picked for today let's get into it all right dolls so for outfit i'm wearing the what a night ruched midi dress in dark red so in this camera it kind of makes it a little bit more red but it's more on the burgundy side and i absolutely love it it has sort of like a, a bustier type thing going on and then the ruching to cover that bralette style and then it's very form-fitting beautiful shapes you beautifully and here is a close-up of the dress now when i turn around you will see a tear and that was from when i was trying to zip it up my nail went right in the middle of the seam and popped it open so please ignore that so that's it for today's Freaky Friday video, loves. I hope you enjoyed the outfit, and I hope you really enjoyed those spooky stories. Like I said, if you have a story to submit, please do submit it to FreakyFridays2019 at gmail.com. As always, I love you dolls, and I hope you have a Freaky Friday. Bye!